Hey guys, welcome back. So I had a few different people ask me to do something about maps, um, about contour maps, about what I look for on a map. Um, you know, when 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 I go out to to hit some new water or something. So it's one of those things that like giant topic, and there are so many little facets to you know interpreting a map that. It can get really easy to just get lost in the weeds and lose sight of, of the simple picture, right? So I figured what I'd do here uh, is just try and very simply the keys, the, the most important things um, to, 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 to look for when you're looking at a map. If you're going to go someplace and you're like, you want to start at a good place or you want to have you know your spots lined up because with the kayak time is of the essence you don't have time to waste the paddling takes time everything is slower so you want to try and get on you want to have an idea of what the most promising spots are going to be before you ever show up so i'm going to try and walk you through this i actually shot this once and tried to do the whole um screen capture thing and it went horribly wrong so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna use images of a map here and when we get to that and hopefully it'll be fine okay a couple of key things to to keep in mind before we get started um first off you can find fish just about anywhere sometimes right and when you're going to new water um, you're not looking for to try and identify like localized patterns uh, You figure that stuff out over time on the same body of water when you're going someplace new you want to focus on general universal fish behavior, right the things that all the fish everywhere do right so that main thing is fish move right they have migrations that they make from deep water to shallow water and some of those migrations are long seasonal migrations and some of those migrations are short daily migrations but they're always moving at some point between deep water and shallow water okay and when they move they follow game trails just like all other animals fish have their own system of game trails okay so the first thing that you're always trying to do when you look at a map is establish the game trail system right establish the game trail system and then within those game trails there are going to be special features that either funnel or congregate the fish so once you've established this is the game trail that goes from deep water to shallow water then you're going to follow that path and say what are the key features here that are going to funnel or congregate fish places that they'll rest places that they'll sit to ambush prey um, those are the spots and then once you've made sort of okay a b c and d are the spots you look at them all and say well based on the time of the year or the time of or the the water conditions recently you know or just how easy it's going to be able to fish this is the one i want to start at so keeping that in mind very simply without me going off on a tangent <laughs> I want to walk through exactly that process on a map. So I went down to Kentucky Lake. Um, I'm not going to show you the exact arm that I was in um, because I thought it'd be fun to just randomly pick another arm and walk through this. So that's what I did and that's where we're going to start. So deep water. Deep water is typically always going to be the channel in a reservoir, an impoundment, right? So there's your deep water. Look at the area you're fishing and your first zone is the deep zone. That's the channel, right? And then for this purpose, we're going to go all the way into the shallows. We're going to go way in up into an arm and basically we'll call the shallows the point where the ledges all sort of peter out and everything starts to flatten and become, become gradual. So that's going to be the finish point. Okay. So we have the channel that's the deep water. We have the finish point that we want to get to. What is the path that fish are going to take to get from the deep water to the shallow water back and forth? What's the game trail? Well, if we look here at this channel, uh, it's pretty clear that there's one spot that, I mean, even it, if you were looking at a road map, it looks like this is the off ramp, right? So right there you have the most obvious place that fish are going to move out of the main channel to start their way into shallower water. So now we have the key starting point and we know where we're going to finish and let's just follow this thing through. So there's an obvious, that off ramp 
has a, has a de definite road right there, right? So you can see that path is very clearly defined. It's narrow, it's deep, it's got good ledges. They're gonna follow that chute and then it sort of opens up and turns into a hole. And that hole's got sort of its, you know, funky shape. And then, but at the end of the hole, you can see there's a spot where the ledges sort of pinch back together a bit and it runs through another shoe and then it opens up again into a big area. And then from that big area where it opens up, you've got sort of one final little chute. And then at that point, you're, you're getting to where the ledges all fall apart. It just turns into flat, shallow. So this is the rough shape of your game trail, right? So everything that's outside of this, you're just going to ignore, right? Yes, there may be fish. Yes, there may be great spots. But you wouldn't be able to learn about those spots. You'd be guessing. And you'd be guessing and putting yourself in a lot of unlikely places to fish if you went out of this particular game trail that we've established. So we're going to only look at the spots on this trail. So let's let's zoom in here. The first thing, we're going to take this first big hole, right? They come out of the channel, they go down that shoe, and it opens up into this first hole. So this first hole, there's two ways of looking at it. And I always look at a big hole or a big opening like this in, in a reservoir, one of two ways. Well, actually, I look at it two of two ways. First off, I look at it in its most simple form. It is a hole in a river, right? And we know certain things about holes in the river and the way fish relate to them. We know that the active fish generally hold at the front side of holes, okay? So I look at this hole and I say, what's the front side? Now, in this river, the current is going from south to north. So it's from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen. So the, the head of the hole is down at the bottom. Now... You can see by the dark lines around it that it doesn't have a very defined ledge at the, at the head of the hole. If it did, that would be a key spot. Because it doesn't and it's sort of more, that's the head of the hole is sort of the most gradual, then I'm not so excited about the head of the hole and I wouldn't focus too hard on it. So the next way I look at this thing is not just as a hole in the river, but let's just define the hole as, as if it were it's the lake. It's an entire lake, right? What are the key features if that hole is the lake? Well, you've got a channel mouth, right? You've got a feeder creek mouth. So, I mean, that's going to be a key spot. That's one of the best looking spots in this area, right? So that's, that's going to be an obvious place to mark off. And then the next thing, if you look down towards the bottom where the head is, there's this jetty, right? I mean, it's a point. It's a long finger kind of point sort of like a jetty would be. And if you look at this thing, I mean, it's beautiful. It gets real shallow. It crowns at like 11 foot. And then it goes on up into the shallows, but it's got deep water. And the, the main part of the channel part of that hole hugs it all the way around it. This would be one of the absolute target spots that I would hit. I would anchor up on that thing and I would make sure that I fished both sides off the end. I would drift across the top of it if it were too big for me to anchor and reach everything. That I would call the money spot in this hole, followed by that, that creek mouth opening. Okay, so that's that first opening, that first hole. So let's move farther in the game trail um, and take a look. Now, the first thing you see is where it curves around that point. It's not very well defined, but then there is this sort of rectangle flat, right? And you've got deep water on all three sides and it pinches together, you know? So this flat isn't your normal shape. This is a big sort of inverted triangle flat roughly 10 foot with, you know, 26 to 30 feet all around it, I would absolutely highlight this spot as a spot to drift over. Um, I would drift all the way across it, and that's a good spot where you'll get fish that would hang off the ledges and push up, push bait fish and feed up on the top of that. And it's a nice big flat. That's like a big table under the water, right? So that would be a key feature. So if you keep going, next we have this, this whole right past that, right? And this hole has probably the most interesting set of features on this entire game trail. So what you have here in this hole, on the left, you have 
current coming in through the main feeder creek out of this arm, whether it's a small river or a big creek or whatever, there's one main channel from that creek that's caused the arm to be there. And that water is coming in from the left into this hole. And then you have a ditch at the head of the hole here at the bottom where the main channel, that's the main current that's coming in, that's going to that's gonna come into the hole through that ditch. So you have this point here at the head of the hole where you have two different currents pouring in, intersecting, crashing right there off that point. If I had to pick one spot all day long to sit and anchor, it would be right here. This spot is the most likely spot to have the most movement. It's going to be the one spot where you're going to have most fish moving in to try and feed and ambush prey and look for food. This is going to be a spot where active fish come, okay? So, so far on the whole game trail system, this is my number one spot because it's a hole and at the head of the hole, you've got two different feeders feeding current into it. That's money. All right, and on top of that, it's also right at the end of this chute, which will funnel the fish, right? So if I were gonna anchor, I would anchor on that point. If I were gonna drift, I would make drift patterns that run all the way along that sharp ledge on both sides, all up over that point and across those two feeder mouths. So those ledges are very good because those ledges are gonna funnel the fish that are moving. So then further in shallow, you see, I mean, it's sort of hard to define, but it's basically one big depression and it has three humps. I mean, that's really what we've got here is a big depression with three humps. If I were gonna fish those humps, I'd pick one and I'd pick what I feel is the best one and that's gonna be the one on the bottom. And the one on the bottom I think is better because it's got a saddle. It's got the most interesting feature of those three humps, right? It's got a saddle, that's where the current's coming in. It's gonna hit that saddle and go up over it. If I were going to hit one of these humps, hit this area in general, I'd hit that bottom hump and I'd fish that. If I had good activity, then I might decide I had a pattern and I'd check those other humps out. If I didn't catch fish on that bottom hump, I would not bother with those top two ones at all. So, and then from there, you basically have that final shoot. Um, and at that point, you, you're looking at just the mouth into the big flats and you're going to set up drift pattern to try and cover as much area as you can over those shallow flats. So this section, this in-between section between the shallow zone and the deep zone, we marked it off. What's the basic path? What's the basic migration route? The game trail. And then we followed it through and looked for the most promising features to hold and congregate fish along the way. And we've established, you know, a handful of good ones with potential and two or three that look like absolute money. And what I would do is I would show up and I would, you know, depending on the wind and the weather, the, for whichever one of those three was the easiest to start at, that's where I'd start. So very simply, without getting into anything else, that's how you want to, that's how you want to start looking at a map to put together a game plan for any trip on any body of water. If you guys like this sort of thing, I mean, we can elaborate. I can do some more of these and, and talk about some of the specifics and the nuances. Um, just understanding this basic process will take you a long, long way. For now, we'll leave it here. Hopefully this gives you some food for thought, something to work with to help you get out, catch more fish. Until next time, paddle up. Let's go looking for a fight.